A panel consisting of Maureen Michaels from One Up Web, Shannon Casey from MichiganByTheBottle.com, and Claudia Tiagi, one of the state's only master sommeliers, gathered at the 2010 Michigan Grape and Wine Conference in Grand Rapids in February to give wineries tips for integrating social media successfully into their overall marketing plan. We tell all of our clients the most important thing that you can do with Twitter and Facebook is to set up a strategy. Set up a strategy for an entire year. Break it down by quarters if you need to. Use a calendar, color code it, whatever you need to do. Social media itself is not the end all be all. It needs to be fully integrated into a campaign to really work. Really listen to your fans. Listen to what they're saying and show them that because they're interacting with you on Twitter and Facebook, they get some sort of value add, that it's worth it to them. How are you going to get your fans to interact with you? How are you going to give them some sort of value add to show them that you really appreciate what you're doing? How are you going to build up those brand advocates who are not only going to interact with you, but are really going to act as your marketing team? Pushing that message out to their friends and family, which in turn brings them back into you. They want to feel that personal connection with you. And if you were to respond to them on Twitter, they're going to stop in. They're, maybe they're going to ask for you, and they're, you know, they're going to tell other people to do the same. 140 characters is all you get on Twitter. Here's another tip. Use 120 of them. Because the whole goal of putting it out there is not just to get it out to your 1,000 fans, but you want me to retweet it to my 4,000 fans, you want Claudia to retweet it, you want Maureen to retweet it, you want it to go viral everywhere. If we have to go in and retweet, when you click a button that says retweet, it says RT or something like that, and it has at your, their username, and that takes up part of the 140 characters. So if we retweet it and you're at 140 characters, I've got to now edit your message. It takes a lot of time, and if it's too complicated, I'm just not going to do it. And if I am going to do it, and I think it's important enough, I'm going to start taking out words out of your message. It may not be the words that you'd want me to take out. Go into Facebook, and there's an option that says, everything I post here, send over to Twitter. It's a time saver. Please uncheck that box. When you do that, Amen. Tw Twitter gives you 140 characters, and anything else it takes it off, so you only have 140 characters to get your message across. If you, on Facebook, you can ramble on for days, right? When you go over 140 characters and you tw automatically tweet it, it sends a link back to Facebook. So you've got all these fans who are interested in learning about what you're saying and want to read about it. And when they click on links, their time is really valuable because they have a lot, they fan up a lot of different Twitter and Facebook people. When you click on a link, they want something informative, they want a picture, they want a website. They don't want to go back to your Facebook page and read the last three words that should have been on that Twitter thing. It's ineffective, it's inefficient, it's frustrating. You're going to turn people off by doing that. Okay? And I realize that not everyone has this sort of generational comfort with the, me the social media, but that doesn't mean that you can't use it to your maximum advantage. Twitter is sort of like a, uh, a literary video game. You, you play it and you see what comes back and it, it's astonishing and you can share. It opens up so many worlds, Thanks. five, ten minutes a day just to play your video game, your literary video game, and you will still get results. Here's the hard part about Facebook is not only do you have a page or you have your business page, there's about, I don't know, a dozen Michigan wine groups Michigan Wine Country, there's Michigan Wine Lovers, there's Northern Michigan Wineries, there's the Leland Peninsula Vintners Association, there's the Pioneer Wine Trail has their own. If you want to do it right, you need to take an extra five or ten minutes a day and you need to check those four sites because your, your fans may not be posting just on your site, not just on your Facebook fan page. They may be talking on Michigan by the Bottle or they may be talking on the Pioneer Wine Trail or whatever, <coughs> Michigan Wine Lovers, all these communities of people. And it's really unfortunate. Sometimes I go to those other sites, and I do it daily. But when I go there, I see somebody asking a question, <coughs> and it's been a week and nobody's responded. There's, what, 71 wineries in Michigan. <coughs> Three quarters of them have Facebook pages. You know, let's, we should be answering these questions. We should be encouraging these people to stop by your tasting room and to pick up your wines and to try them. And it's, again, it's just one more piece of that interaction. Uh, I've just found Twitter ideal because I get more bang for the buck, which is like, you, you pay nothing for it, it's free. And the return is 
is, is really quite amazing. You make a lot of contact. The number of pages that people can be a fan of on Facebook is limited. So they can only be a fan of 70 pages. If they've chosen your Facebook page, that says something. So the people on Twitter are there to interact with you. They're there to talk with you. There's exponential opportunity there. But the people on Facebook are going to be the ones that you can really use, that you can really interact with to become your brand advocates. They're going to be the most powerful group for you. you. There's a lot of rich opportunity for you folks out there. There really is. And I want you to maximize this.